Now, this is about as close as a close call you get when the distance between uh, Mars and Earth is 97 million kilometres, but apparently that's as good as we're going to get for a, a nice close-up shot. Well, good morning, Shawnee Morris from the Midlands Astronomy Club. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? 97 million kilometres. Does it vary much? It can from, you know, during the course of the year now, it was about six weeks ago, uh, seven weeks ago that Mars was at its closest to Earth at this time. Uh, I think it was 2012 when the last time it was at its utmost closest. So as the planets go around the sun, there is a time when Earth and Mars are on the same side of the sun and will pass very close to each other. So, Mm. uh, you know, for the past five, six weeks, Mars has appeared very, very bright in the sky and it will for a couple excuse me, for another month or so. Uh, But tonight, the reason why we're kind of highlighting it is because the moon is very close by. Last night, the moon was to the right of Mars. Tonight, it's to the left of Mars as the moon does its little orbit around Earth. So it has this little, what we call a conjunction uh, phenomenon visible in the sky this evening. Of course, we always tend to think of the way the planets line up as on those charts we see in school. So therefore... Venus or Mars are the closest to Earth. Yeah. But actually, Mercury is the closest planet most of the time because of where it happens to be in its orbit around the sun. Now, that can... Not necessarily, actually. Uh, Mercury is the innermost planet. Mm. So... It's closest to the sun. Yes. Yes. Uh, sorry, that's what you said. I beg your pardon. <laughs> no, no, but because sometimes Mars yeah. or Venus will be the far side of the sun that way, from Earth. Yes, I beg your pardon. Yes. yes. So it's like as if they are being eclipsed by the sun because mm-hmm. they're on the opposite side. So therefore they're at a greater distance from Earth. A far greater distance. Than Mercury would Yes, be. that's right. I mean, distances could be up to 321 million kilometres from Earth. But we don't see it when that happens. Uh, in this case all the planets are actually on the one side from the sun. So as it stands, if we had a nice clear evening this evening, which the forecast is not favourable, but we did last night, you will see in the evening sky, just as the sun has set, uh, you've got Saturn, Mercury and Venus. Come a little more to the left, you're going to have Jupiter, big bright white one, right overhead. A little more to the left of that is Uranus, but it's just under naked eye visibility. A little to the left of, again of that is the orange globe of Mars. And tonight, a little to the left of that one again is the moon. So all And Neptune is there as well in between. Also Have you just any under. hope of seeing Neptune, though? Uh, you not by the naked eye. It, uh, there was a time, maybe 200 years ago, that Uranus was just under naked eye visibility, maybe under exceptionally clear skies you could see Uranus. Mm. But because of the industrial age and pollutants inside the atmosphere now, you do definitely need a binoculars or a telescope to see it, but not very powerful ones. The same with Neptune. If you know where to look, then you can find them. Neptune and Uranus under ideal seeing conditions will look a little bit greeny, a little bit bluey, so that's how you know they're not necessarily a star. They don't twinkle either. So each of the planets has its own visual characteristic. And by the way, with Venus and Mercury, because they're on the inner paths around the sun from Earth, when you do see them through a binoculars or a telescope, at different times, they'll show phases just like the moon. Really? Yet they're not always perfectly circular. They'll be crescent-shaped or gibbous-shaped, and it's all because of where they lie relative to observing from Earth, relative to the left or to the right of the sun in space. So you see different degrees of the surface is lit, just like the moon does as it goes around Earth. What magnification will you need on your binoculars? Minimum. Ah, you know, a typical 10 by 50 binoculars, 10 by 30 binoculars, which are your standard kind of ones that you will see, they will show it easily. Uh, they'll show you the four moons of Jupiter. They'll give you the rugby ball shape of Saturn when its rings are tilted mm. favourably to us. Uh, but then go a little bit better again, a five or six inch reflecting telescope. And you'll, you know, you'll get to see you know, definitively those shapes a little bit bigger, a little bit more detail, get to an eight or a 10 or a 12 inch reflector telescope. And that's what I have as well with a 12 inch reflector. I could actually see the surface features of Mars. I could split the rings of Saturn and I could see the four cloud belts and the great red spot of Jupiter. So there's a lot that can be seen depending on what your budget is and how far much, how far you want to go spending on it. I'm laughing at a text from Mike who likes your pronunciation of the seventh planet. I have to be cautious. Uh, yes, I know. If we all said Uranus, we'll all be saying it with a smile. Uh, well, but that's what we say in Ireland. I know, and Irish on, people don't say Uranus. I know, and on Sunday night, the moon actually occulted uh, Uranus. So. Oh. oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Blame the Midlands Astronomy Club. We had to go yep. there. 
Check out Midlands Astronomy Club online. Shawnee Morris, thank you very much. Thank you, Will.